But first, the arguments against nuclear power, that it's too expensive and would take too long to install, are steadily being debunked. Ontario is the most important province in Canada. About 15 million people in its main city, Toronto, is about the same size as Sydney or Melbourne. A key difference, though, between Ontario and, say, New South Wales or Victoria is that Ontario has much cheaper power. It's reliable and abundant and that it gets most of it, about 60 per cent, from nuclear energy. As the Ontario Energy Minister Todd Smith told Ross Greenwood on Sky on Sunday and also Sydney Radio's Ben Fordham again yesterday, nuclear is the way to go. Now, I'm sure the last thing the Ontario Minister wants is to take sides in a political debate here in Australia. But what he said means that Labor's arguments against nuclear energy just do not stack up. Actually, the Albanese government looks increasingly silly on this, like yesterday in the Parliament when the Defence Minister Richard Miles was extolling the virtues of nuclear power at sea just moments after the Energy Minister Chris Bowen had been attempting to debunk nuclear energy on land. There is also a commitment of £2.4 billion over the next 10 years to expand the Rolls-Royce facility in Derby in the UK, which is where the nuclear reactors will be built for Australia's future Order. submarines. Order. They have genius policy to put downward pressure on prices. $86 billion a pop for one reactor and they want six. Let's bring on the debate. Jeez, Bowen's a clown, isn't he? But as for the argument that small modular reactors don't exist, here's the Ontario Energy Minister, Todd Smith. We're also at the forefront in the Western world in building a small modular reactor. Construction is already underway and we're going to be building four of these 300 megawatt GE Hitachi BWRX 300s on site at the Darlington reactor just outside uh, Toronto's. As for Labor's argument that nuclear power would take too long to build, here's Smith again. We're building a small modular reactor right now at Darlington. Uh, we put shovels in the ground in 2022. We expect to have that small modular reactor producing electricity by late 2028, early 29. And as for the argument that wind and solar are the cheapest form of power, and that nuclear is the most expensive, here's the Energy Minister again. Uh, well, we have seen uh, the previous government here in Ontario, uh, they went full speed ahead on renewables and they were paying way over market uh, cost for that electricity, you know, eight to 10 times more than what we say we're getting from our nuclear fleet. At eight to 10 cents a kilowatt hour, they were paying 60 to 80 cents a kilowatt hour uh, for intermittent, unreliable, uh, renewable power from mostly wind and solar installations. The Ontario Energy Minister makes the absolutely essential point that our Minister Chris Bowen always ignores, and that's that we need electricity all the time, not just when the sun shines and the wind blows. Uh, you know, obviously this is, sounds uh, elementary, but the sun doesn't shine at night, so your solar disappears at night. Uh, the wind sometimes and quite often only produces at night. Uh, both of them have capacity factors, uh, meaning they're there only about 25 to 35 percent of the time, whereas the nuclear facilities that we have in Ontario are there 94 to 97 percent of the time. They're there 365 days a year, 24-7. Then there's the Bowen argument that we can't have nuclear power because we lack the regulatory regime, as if we could never manage what 30 other countries already have. Our regulator has been a leader globally in working with other countries around the world, like Poland, for instance, that's looking to do the same thing that we've done in Ontario. Finally, far more than needing more intermittent renewable power to attract industry, it's reliable power, in this case, reliable nuclear power, that's attracting jobs and industry to Ontario. And the fact that we have a 90% clean grid, one of the cleanest in the world, uh, that is going to be expanding its nuclear profile, uh, that we're seeing the massive investments that we're seeing here. 
in the nearby province of Quebec, by contrast, that relies almost entirely on hydropower, Smith says this. They're going to have an electricity and energy shortage in the next 10 years, and they're going to have to turn away investments uh, because they're simply not going to have the power. Now, as you know, I'm not in favour of closing down coal-fired power and failing to develop gas-fired power just because of emissions, particularly given our emissions are scarcely 1% of global totals. But if we really do have to get to net zero and we want to keep, must keep, a first world economy, there's only one way to do it, and that's via nuclear power. Again, Energy Minister from Ontario, Todd Smith. If we want to hit the climate targets that have been set uh, by the federal government, that there's really only one way that you can do that, and that's with reliable, affordable uh, baseload power that really only comes uh, from small modular reactors or large reactors. Is it any wonder that the Albanese government won't debate nuclear power, only demonise it, even though that's the same power they say they want for our future submarine fleet? Finally, look at these graphs showing the cost of power per kilowatt hour. At 14 cents, Ontario isn't the cheapest in Canada, but it's pretty good. Now look at New South Wales and Victoria at 34 cents, and 29 cents per kilowatt hour respectively, that's a lot more expensive than Ontario. I reckon that makes it game, set, match for nuclear power. And I tell you what, if Todd Smith wants to challenge Chris Bowen for his job, I reckon that's a lay down Mazea as well.